Hey everyone, this is Andy with Immediate Arabic, and today we're talking about creating an artificial Arabic immersion environment. So let's first talk about what is a immersion environment. Well, uh, traditionally that is when you head overseas, maybe you're staying with a host family in, say, the country of Jordan. You are utilizing local transportation, going out of the town using Arabic, you're shopping in Arabic, uh, you're working or you're going to school and using Arabic. So you spend about 90% of your day in your target language, in this case, Arabic, and maybe 10% because you got to maybe write some text or you have to uh, talk to somebody in the States. Uh, you might use 10% of your English. Now, sounds easy, but it's not really that easy because a lot of people do speak English. The other option is finding a school like uh, Middlebury where you're in there for eight weeks. You sign a paper and say, I'm not speaking any English for the next eight weeks. That's an awesome idea, too. Now, the problem with these uh, two things, though, is a place like Middlebury for a lot of us is very expensive. Uh, we don't have the time or the money. Uh, the second thing is, is we can't always just drop everything we're doing and uh, head overseas. So what can we do in place of that? Well, that's why we're talking about creating this artificial immersion environment where we're going to be surrounded by Arabic most of the day. I'd like here. Uh, I'd like to sit here and say that we could create the perfect immersion environment here in the United States or wherever you're studying, but we can't really do that because we have to use English uh, to talk to other people. We probably have girlfriends, boyfriends, husbands, wives, friends, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, that we're going to have to communicate in English to some degree. That being said, we can still create an artificial uh, Arabic learning environment, and this is going to be the first step. The first step is preparation, and you're probably going to need about a week to get everything together. So give yourself a little bit of time with that. And you're going to start out, you're going to need your resources, and this can be anything from books, um, YouTube videos, uh, movies, Netflix, Amazon Prime, um, anywhere you can get any materials, collect what you need for your particular level. What one person needs is going to be certainly different than somebody who's at a uh, different level. After that, you're going to need to buy sticky notes. You're going to need to buy flashcards and probably some tape and also a small um, kind of pocket-sized uh, notebook that you can keep with you at all times. And when I mean all times, I mean every minute of the day. And in this notebook, you're going to write down anything that you have questions on or practice if you have five minutes at the doctor's office whatever the case may be but you keep that with you at all times so if you're walking around a store and you don't know the name of something and you think you need to know it in arabic uh, before you forget it write it down come back at some point and translate it in addition you need to make sure that you find some native arabic speakers this could be the way of a paid teacher this could be a language partner that you pick up at italki um, and certainly you can think of a list of uh, possible friends or the plans of meeting up and uh, talking to people who speak Arabic. This is extremely important. Do not try to do this uh, without talking to people, okay? Uh, if you have to spend the extra, you know, 10, you can pr probably get a uh, online tutor for like 10 bucks uh, per lesson but you need to speak every day, both with somebody and by yourself. Last but not least, discipline. This is just as important as the other three items we mentioned. Without discipline, this is not going to work. So make sure that you are mentally prepared, mentally ready, that when you start this, that every moment you have within a certain time frame, that you're not doing something else that you are putting in Arabic time. All right, let's confirm our uh, artificial immersion checklist. Uh, first off, uh, make sure to switch over any social media accounts, your phone, anything that has uh, that you're going to be using on a regular basis that you can switch into Arabic, switch those into Arabic. All right, item number two, your Arabic flashcards and post-it notes. It doesn't matter what you put up um, as long as it's labeled. So we are going to label everything. Think of your house as basically a supermarket. And everything has a price tag and everything has a label. You're going to start with an empty flashcard and you're going to turn it into a flashcard with Arabic writing on it. Now, start with each room. Uh, for example, we have a kitchen here. So you're going to change your kitchen from this to this. 
Again, label everything you can figure out the name to. Now, going on, we want to add to this. We also want to create cards that have actual sentences. In this case, we have, I will wash my hands. I am washing my hands. And I will wash my hands. So try to do that all around the house as well. You could do it in the shower. You could do it, be um, maybe put something uh, next to the uh, front door. I am going to school. Um, whatever the case may be, just make sure that it's interactive, read it out loud and read it as you're doing it. Uh, don't just read it real quick and forget about it. Read it as you're actually doing it. Um, examples might be like, I will brush my teeth. I am brushing my teeth. I brush my teeth. I will watch TV. I am watching TV. I watch TV. So put those around the house as well. Item number three, resources. Resources can be anything. We have a short list here. Arabic books, YouTube, podcasts, um, your apps, you know, Rosetta Stone, Duolingo, Pimsleur, uh, internet articles. The list could go on literally forever. Um, my suggestion is, is find items um, that are suitable for your level plus one. So it shouldn't be everything you know. It should be everything you know plus uh, one level up from that. Last but not least, one super important note here, guys. Make sure all your materials are ready to go from day one. You do not want to be searching for the YouTube video you're looking for, the podcast, the book, et cetera, et cetera. They need to be handy and ready to be used when you need them. All right. Item number four, uh, your speaking partners and teachers. Uh, teachers sometimes are difficult to find, at least the ones uh, that uh, will give you a good lesson. Uh, but things that we're looking for is, are they engaging? Are the topics that you guys are discussing interesting? Are they doing too much lecture and theory? We don't want that. We want to actually to have a back and forth with them. It should not just be listening to, you know, grammar theory or anything like that. Uh, they should allow you to make mistakes. We don't like overcoaching. Overcoaching uh, potentially will um, make the student uh, to some degree uh, shy from uh, wanting to speak too much. Um, it's okay to make mistakes. You'll end up learning everything that you need through time. Keep to relevant topics. Relevant topics are things that uh, are appropriate to your level. For instance, if you're Arabic 101 student, then you're going to be probably wanting to talk about meeting people the first time, i.e. meeting and greeting, um, maybe taking a cab, maybe buying something, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, every day, um, day to day type uh, things. And finally, make sure that the lessons are dynamic. They should just not be this boring thing where you expect the same thing every day. Um, they should be able to keep you on your toes, talk about different things instead of just going through, again, kind of a lecture and theory type of discussion. Item number five is your pocket notebook. So your pocket notebook is going to have two distinct purposes. Number one, you're going to want to keep it so that anytime you run into something during the day uh, that you do not know how to say, whether it's a single vocabulary word or even a phrase, you write that down and then later on you translate it either through Google Translate, YouTube, or perhaps a native speaker. The second thing is you can use that uh, because you can carry this around anywhere you go. When you have two, three, five minutes, whatever the case may be, write some vocabulary down, create some sentences, tell a story, uh, tell where you are, whatever the case may be in Arabic. And you want to do this all the time. Uh, a real quick, <clears throat> a real quick, um, kind of a case study on this. I had a friend of mine, very, very bright. Uh, we'll probably do a video on him at some point in time, but he uh, was studying pre-med at uh, UVA many, many, many years ago. And I still remember listening to the story. We were out uh, having a beer somewhere and uh, he said, uh, I would carry around my notebook because I refused to study in the traditional sense. And he goes, anytime I was at a bus stop or I was at work or somewhere, I would write down these equations for organic chemistry. And he said he did that day in, day out. He said if he was walking from one side of the campus to the other, he had 15, 20 minutes. He'd stop and use like the uh, whiteboards that were in the uh, classes. And he said he did this so much every day in a non-traditional study manner of just, you know, five minutes here, 10 minutes here, 20 minutes here. He literally started dreaming uh, of these equations every time he went to sleep and ended up actually getting the highest grade in the entire uh, course out of uh, all the uh, very intelligent people that were taking it. 
So utilize that notebook, write down things that you don't know, and then try to um, practice your Arabic when even if you only have two or three minutes and do this throughout the day. Last but not least, let's look at schedule and we have an example schedule for you. As far as scheduling goes, your schedule is obviously going to uh, differ from this, but use this as a, a template, if you will. Seven o'clock, you wake up, this is your shower, brush your teeth time, get ready for uh, uh, school or war work, whatever. Uh, and you should be reading everything you have uh, in your bathroom. You should be reading all the post-it notes, flashcards, et cetera, et cetera, out loud. 7.30, I would work on flashcards. Uh, you know, if you have a deck of them, I wouldn't do this too long. This is kind of your first layer of the day. Flashcards are great if you only have two or three minutes of studying later on. 7.40, active listening. What's the difference between active listening and passive listening? Active listening is where you're totally focused and hearing every word. Passive listening is where it's kind of on in the background. Maybe you're doing something else. 8 o'clock, I would suggest doing some reading, writing exercises. 8.30 is your commute to school or work. And this should be passive listening in the vehicle. 9 o'clock is class. You're not going to be able to do much till that. 9.50, you're going to your next class. Review your flashcards during that time. 10 o'clock, class maybe again. 10.50, you break for lunch. So make sure that you study while you're eating. 12 o'clock class, 12.50, walk in your next class, perhaps uh, get out the flashcards, think in Arabic, uh, talk to yourself. 1 o'clock, perhaps class again. 1.50, you uh, have a break. Um, find a place to study, um, it, whatever it is. I don't care if it's YouTube. I don't care if it's doing some sort of uh, like transcription where you're copying, reading uh, Arabic. Um, uh, or if you can possibly find somebody who might be uh, be able to talk to you, a classmate, then do some speaking. Finally, your three o'clock last class, 3.50, your commute home and do some passive listening on the way back. 4.30, kind of relax, watch some YouTube, Netflix and Arabic. Uh, 5.30, hit the gym, make sure that you're uh, doing your uh, passive listening there and utilizing your flashcards. Finally, dinner, uh, do something a little bit relaxing, probably uh, maybe an Arabic movie, something to that degree. And then finally, seven o'clock, try to make sure that you have a, a native speaker that you can talk to. At eight o'clock, kind of shut the engines down and you'll be doing English for the rest. Now, one thing that I didn't mention throughout this whole thing is you're going to have things like bathroom breaks or, you know, five minutes here, five minutes there. Always be doing something in Arabic. I don't care what it is. That's why getting everything ready to go beforehand in that uh, week prior, it's going to behoove you to get that done so that once you do have that little bit of time, you can go ahead and utilize it. A couple final thoughts for uh, uh, this video. Uh, one, remember, we're trying to maximize uh, the amount of Arabic that you learn within a specified amount of time. And two, if you don't get something, uh, don't worry about it. You're not at here trying to take a test. You're trying to learn the language. And there's a distinct difference between both. Uh, two, you really should have this feeling of my brain is mush. I am beat at the end of each day. If you don't have that feeling, you're probably not either trying hard enough or doing something correctly. And finally, if you would like to become a student or have any questions, uh, our email is up here. We'd love to hear from you. We specialize in rapid acquisition of the Arabic language. So we wish you the best of luck in your Arabic journey. Masalama.